In the previous video, we have seen that according to this definition of semaphore and atomic function, the bounded weight is not satisfied. Not only that, a processor who cannot enter the critical section should keep on waiting in the while loop. This condition is termed as busy waiting. And in a multi-programming environment, it leads to the wastage of a lot of CPU cycles. In all the previous solutions that we have discussed till now, including Peterson's and Bakery algorithm, had the problem of busy waiting. Again, in this example of semaphore, we have seen the value of semaphore is either 0 or 1 at any time. Such a semaphore is termed as binary semaphore. The semaphore can be of two types, binary semaphore whose value is either 0 or 1 at any time and counting semaphore whose value ranges between minus infinity to plus infinity. Now we are going to discuss the implementation of binary semaphore with bounded weight condition satisfied as well as there is no busy waiting. Here, the semaphore is associated with not only an integer value but also with a waiting queue of processes. Now, there are two atomic functions, weight and signal. To ensure mutual exclusion, we should initialize the semaphore value with 1. And before entering the critical section, every process should execute the weight function as the entry code and while exiting the critical section, the process should execute the signal function as the exit code. In the wait function, the process will check the value of semaphore. If the semaphore value is 1, it means one process can enter inside the critical section. The, the value will be made to 0 and the process will enter inside the critical section without waiting. Otherwise, if the value is 0, if some process is inside the critical section, the S value will be 0 and hence the process should wait. So, unlike the previous implementation, instead of waiting in the while loop, the process will add itself to the queue associated with the semaphore and get blocked. This is how busy waiting is avoided here. Thus, if a process entered inside the critical section, S value will be made to 0 and as long as that process is inside the critical section, S value remains to be 0. Hence, any new process, if tries to enter the critical section, will wait in the queue without busy waiting. Now, one process while exiting from the critical section, it will execute the signal function. In the signal function, it will first check is there any process associated with the waiting queue, whether the queue is empty or not. If the queue is not empty, if there is some process associated with the waiting queue, then such processes have to be served first. For that, we will remove one process from that list and call the wake up function for that process. Then that process who is woken up will move from the blocked state to the ready state. It means whenever it gets the processor, it will be able to execute the critical section next. Thus, if this queue is maintained as a first in first out queue, the processes will be served according to their order of request. This is how bounded weight is achieved. Now, while a process exits from the critical section, if the list is empty, if the queue is empty, it means there are no processes waiting, then if any new process tries to enter the critical section, it should be allowed to enter the critical section for that S value will be made to 1. Consider this example, let there are four processes P1, P2, P3 and P4 which share something and competing for a critical section. 
we have to ensure mutual exclusion hence s value is initialized to 1 now p1 wishes to enter the critical section it will execute the weight function as the entry call it check the value of semaphore since the semaphore value is 1 it means one process can enter inside the critical section thus s value will be made to 0 and p1 enter inside the critical section now while p1 is inside the critical section let p2 tries to enter the critical section p2 also execute the wait function as the entry count it check the value of semaphore since the semaphore value is 0, it means the process is not allowed to enter the critical section. Thus, instead of waiting in the while loop, P2 will add itself to the waiting queue associated with the semaphore and move to the block state. Thus, P1 is inside the critical section and P2 is waiting in the queue. At this time, P3 needs to enter the critical section. P3 also tries to enter the critical section. It will check the value of semaphore. The semaphore value is 0. Thus, P3 also will add itself to the queue associated with the semaphore and move to the block stage. Now, suppose P1 completed the critical section. While exiting from the critical section, P1 will execute the signal function as the exit code. This P1 will in the signal function will check the list or the queue. Is there any process waiting in the queue? If there is some process waiting in the queue, such processes have to be served first. The P1 will remove the process. Suppose this queue is maintained as the first in first out queue to ensure bounded weight. Thus P1 will remove the first process from this queue that is P2. And P2 will move from the blocked state to the ready state. So if P2 get the processor, P2 will be able to enter the critical section next. But suppose P4 got the processor next. Now P4 is having the processor and P4 wishes to enter the critical section. For that P4 will execute the wait function but it will check the value of semaphore. Since the semaphore value is still 0, P4 will never enter the critical section. It will add itself to the waiting queue and move to the blocked stage. Thus, even though the critical section is free, since the semaphore value is maintained to be 0, even if a new request arrives while there are processes waiting in the queue, even if a new process request arrives, such processes will be sent to the queue itself. Now suppose P2 got the processor. P2 will enter inside the critical section and will execute the critical section. Now suppose P2 completed the critical section. While exiting from the critical section, it will check the queue. The queue is not empty. P2 will remove one process from the queue. That is the first process P3 from the queue. P3 will move from the blocked stage to the ready stage. Next P3 will be able to execute the critical section. Now P3 also executed the critical section. While exiting from the critical section, P3 will check the queue. The queue is still not empty. Thus it will remove the first process from the queue. That is P4. Next P4 will be able to enter the critical section next. Suppose P4 also completed the critical section. P4 has exited the critical section. Now while exiting the critical section, P4 will check the queue. The queue is empty. If the queue is empty, it means there are no processes waiting in the queue. Then if a new request arrives, then that process should be allowed to enter the critical section. For that, S value will be made to 1. Now S value is 1. Hence if a new process request arrives, if any new process tries to enter the critical section, it will be able to enter the critical section. 
Let P2 again tries to enter the critical section. It will check the value of semaphore. Since the semaphore value is 1, it will enter inside the critical section. Thus here, the value of the semaphore is either 0 or 1 at any time and hence it is called a binary semaphore. And by using this queue and block and wake up functions, the busy waiting is avoided and if the queue is maintained as a first in first out queue, the processes will be served according to the order of request and hence bounded wait can be achieved too.